Welcome to this workshop on wireless model predictive control. In this video we'll examine the solution to the workshop presented in Chapter 9 of Wireless Control Foundation book. In this workshop there are several exercises which we use to show how model predictive control can be implemented using a wireless measurement. In the first step of the exercise we examine how model predictive control has been implemented on the divided wall column process. Uh, we'll examine then uh, the performance index that has been implemented uh, to measure control performance. We'll introduce a set point change into the top temperature control uh, of the column and observe the uh, control performance. We'll be measuring this in terms of integral of absolute error and number of communications recorded during the test. We'll then uh, enable uh, wireless uh, measurements on the column control and reset our, our performance calculation and introduce uh, again a change into the top temperature and compare performance using wireless versus to what we saw with wired. This shows the uh, simulation of the divided wall column. Model predictive control is used to adjust uh, the flows on the uh, column. In this case we'll be adjusting the top temperature by adjusting the uh, reflux flow to the column. There are other uh, flows that will be adjusted by model predictive control to maintain composition at different points within the column, but we'll focus in this exercise on the top temperature. Model predictive control is embedded within the control system. Here we're examining the setup of the control. As you can see, our control parameters are the uh, four temperatures that indicate properties of the column. Uh, our manipulated parameters are the flows, uh, the flow set point of flow control loops uh, associated with the column. Uh, by changing the mode, we can then adjust uh, the flows of the independent uh, flow loops. For the top temperature, it's normally implemented as just a cascade control of temperature. Of a top temperature, that temperature control loop cascaded to the reflux flow of the uh, column. Uh, for implementation with model predictive control, we add a composite which is used to provide the temperature to the uh, MPC, and that composite is used to adjust status. Here is the simulation that we're using to uh, simulate the uh, top temperature as well as all the other temperatures and flow loops of the, uh, of the uh, process. Uh, you notice here uh, we are not only uh, simulating the, the process but also wireless communication, in particular windowed communication with a dead band of 1 a period of 16 and a default of 32 seconds. By enabling and disabling this parameter we're able to turn on and off wireless measurements. This is showing the module that we're using to measure performance of the column. We're looking at the difference between the set point and actual temperature and then integrating that error, the absolute value of that to get our integral of absolute error. We're detecting new communications that are looking at a change in value and then our calculation uh, then uh, sums up the number of new communications. We can enable the calculation and which we've done here by going to our operator interface we can uh, select the upper temperature that's being controlled by uh, model predictive control and we'll introduce a 10% uh, change in that upper temperature. In this case we're using the wired measurement uh, so we're not uh, using a wireless. Uh, as you can see using the wired measurement we get very smooth response in model predictive control to the set point change. Uh, in the green we're showing then the future predicted value of, of the uh, measurement. With model predictive control, we're able to independently adjust the uh, temperature or composition at the different points within the column without any interaction. 
as you can see using your wired measurement you get a very smooth response to the temperature set point change and over time then we come uh, up to a set point to demonstrate the performance using a wireless measurement for the temperature we'll uh, go back uh, to our performance index and here you notice that for the wired measurement that we had an uh, integral of absolute error of 47 and the number of communications was 87 communications. We'll uh, zero this out and uh, then we will go to our simulation and enable uh, wireless measurement. So, uh, when we enable wireless, then uh, the measurement will be simulated as a windowed communication with a uh, dead band of 1%, a period of 16, and a default of uh, 32 seconds. So here we have enabled uh, wireless communication, and uh, we'll now uh, set our performance index. We'll now start monitoring the performance. We'll go back to our operation interface and make again a 10% change in set point. When we uh, change our set point, uh, we will notice that immediately you see model predictive control start to take action upon the uh, set point change. And when you observe the response uh, to that set point change, you notice that you see a very similar behavior to what we had with a wired measurement. It's almost uh, uh, exactly the same. Now if we look at the actual measurement itself though, this trend shows the true wireless measurement and you notice that it changes very infrequently. In between changes in the measurement we're using automatically in model predictive control the simulated value of the uh, temperature that's based upon the status that was calculated by that composite that we saw earlier in our uh, control loop. At the points where uh, we get a new measurement you'll notice a little bit of indentation on the response that is showing then the update uh, based upon the new measurements that's correcting for a model. Now you notice here the integral of absolute error is a little worse but also for this entire control we only used four new communications versus previously we used 81 where we had a wired measurement. So this shows you then the ability of model predictive control to do a very good job of control using very few new updates. In between the measurement updates uh, we are uh, simulating the value. This is all based upon the status that that composite is calculating to indicate to model predictive control whether or not a uh, measurement is new or whether it's an old measurement. So we're changing the status to constant when no new measurement is available and in those time frames then we're simulating the uh, actual temperature based upon the manipulated parameters and the model that is inherent within model predictive control.